Hi there, just putting together a uh, quick demonstration of Super Study Party, the platform that I mentioned yesterday. And just to give you a run through of how it works and how uh, a teacher does their part while then branching that off to allow pupils to play it. So um, when you log into the Study Party portal, which is on the browser, uh, you'll be faced with this where you can obviously go and create a game or you can manage your topics and departments. Uh, the way it's set up is that a digital lead at the school would have a kind of admin um, login, if you like, and they'll have uh, tools to basically manage the whole school. But um, a typical teacher would have something that looks like this, where they can set their department, so what department they teach in, and uh, the departments get listed by the digital lead when they set up their account. And then once you've done that, you can go in and manage either your department directly or you can come back to the dashboard, or you can go in and see every department. So uh, let's say I was working in another department for whatever reason, I could go in there and I could add some topics and so on. Um, but for this instance, I'm just gonna show you business and computing. So um, when you come in, you can create a, a new topic and you can call the topic whatever you like. So we just call this a test topic. And because you know, especially with the BGE, you can have a topic that goes across S1, S2, and S3. Or for instance, if you're doing a NAT5 topic, you might want to cover that in S3, S4, S5, or, you know, however you want to work it. Um, it could just be one year as well. So you basically tick what boxes this is suitable for. So we could say it's suitable for all years, or we could just say it's suitable for just the first three. Um, so that's what we have here. And then we can add that. And you can see we get our test topic then. And when we come in here and we go to terms, we basically just like Kahoot or Quizlet, we can enter a term. And for instance, um, I'll put in a term saying um, uh, <laughs> test term, and then the definition would be a test definition. Uh, but what we've come across with certain subjects is that some terms will have multiple definitions. So for instance, if I want to talk about uh, a kind of word, or uh, in fact, I'll, I'll show you something that'll maybe explain that a lot better, but it's very straightforward. Uh, you do that a number of times. So uh, we'll do test two, test two, term. Uh, I'm just gonna add a couple more because I'll show you this in the game in just a second. I'll just ignore this spam here that I've got going. And one more for good measure. And that is pretty much all it would take to set up a quiz for that topic. Um, the way I envision it working and I would encourage people to do is um, during like in service days at the start of the year or something, when you've got your roadmap kind of planned out for what you're gonna be teaching that year, you could kind of divvy this up and say, let's say two people in the department will go and create topic quizzes for these topics and the other two members will go and do other topics for other years and so on. And eventually you'll end up with like a full uh, department worth of quizzes that scales across the whole uh, secondary uh, experience, if you like. And then once you've got that for the whole school, as I mentioned, when it comes to please takes and things like that, you should have literally every bit of content that a pupil's learning at any year all in one place. So that then regardless of what game they're playing, they'll be able to study any topic that is suitable for them. So even if that's looking back at last year or they're looking at their current year or looking at a topic that they're gonna be doing after Christmas or after Easter, they should be able to you know, study what they want when they need to. Um, and later down the line, we're gonna look at things like lock-in topics and things like that. But you know, it, it's, uh, it's one place that is gonna be consistent and every school would have their own portal if you like. So for instance, Stonelaw My School would have this portal and then Cathkin would have a separate portal with all their stuff. So if let's say uh, English, as we spoke about yesterday, uh, English would have a separate um, a topic, for instance. So let's say S2, they were doing Macbeth instead of Hamlet. There wouldn't be a Hamlet talk, uh, topic in my school, but it would be a Macbeth one and vice versa, if that makes sense. So. Um, I mentioned having multiple definitions, so I think what I think it was under uh, sorry, sorry, admin support. There we go. So one thing we noticed is that some terms require multiple definitions. So for instance, Microsoft Word can be used for multiple things. So when we're teaching uh, S1's different software and what can be done in different software, 
um, we realize that definitions come up a lot of times. So when it comes to generating these questions, um, it become you know it become beneficial to add lots of definitions so that when these questions are generated in games, it would let's say pick a correct answer from Microsoft Excel, but then pick three wrong answers from other questions. So then when it came up saying Microsoft Excel, what's it used for? It would have one correct answer and then one wrong answer from here, one wrong answer from here and one wrong answer from here. And then it would just constantly generate that so that from just these five questions, um, you could potentially have like 30, 40 questions. Um, and that obviously then is beneficial because they're learning every single aspect of that topic, if you like. And I think uh, I, I came across that while I was talking to uh, one of the deputies about uh, PE and uh, I've deleted it, but yeah, you get the idea. So uh, this is the portal. Um, obviously this is still a work in progress and we're adding a lot more to this, but um, I'm just gonna cut here and then I'm gonna show you how you create a game. Okay, so um, here you can see the kind of login section for a teacher and basically you'd log in with your Glow username and everything, which is what you've set up with. And uh, basically you get given this screen. Um, so first off, you need to select a department. And uh, as you saw, I created a quiz in the business and computing and I can pick what year group it was for. And you can see that I've got my test topic here with how many questions I created. So if I go through these, um, we can see um, any differences in the years. So this is for the MPA that I use currently. Um, and then we go through to different years and see what is basically different. And we can jump between each uh, topic and see that in drama we have one, in English we have one topic, uh, in PE there's no questions in that one, uh, biology we have one. So if I was taking a please take in a different department, I could access this and basically rely on the subject specialist to upload questions prior to me taking that class and have something that is relevant for the year that I'm teaching as well as you know a topic that they either know or should know or are learning about. So um, for this instance, I'm just gonna pick a web design topic or in fact, no, I'll do computer systems, sorry. Um, I can switch terms and definitions around. So instead of asking uh, who wrote Hamlet, uh, I can give the author's name and then the answer would be Hamlet, if that makes sense. Um, it, it's just a, another way of questioning the same content, but it works again for every type of question that you put into the system. Um, so even if it was the multiple definitions, as I just showed you, uh, it would pick the definition and then pick four wrong answers, if that makes sense. Uh, I can set the number of questions. So uh, like Kahoot, when you've created a Kahoot, yeah, you've got your fixed questions. So let's say we've only got five minutes, we, we could drop this down to five, but let's say we're gonna do a full period of just studying this one topic, we could jump that up to 20 or, or you know even 500, uh, 50 questions and just go with that, okay? Uh, for this instance, I'm just gonna do 10. And then we, get, we click the next button. And this is where it takes us onto our retrieval section. Um, and as it says here, by enabling retrieval, you can select a second topic to include within the game and how often these questions will appear. So you could just focus on um, computer systems if you like, or you can enable retrieval or disable it again, whatever you like. Um, for this instance, I'm gonna do business and computing again, and I am going to do uh, admin support, I believe. Uh, and again, you know, uh, as I mentioned down here, you've got your ratio, you can set what you want that to be. So setting it to 50, 50% uh, 50 of the questions, the 10 questions that I set will be a retrieval topic, which is worth more points. And 50% um, will be the base topic, which would be computer systems. Um, you, you can mess with that as much as you like. And once you are ready, you can click next and then the game will start. And then exactly like Kahoot, um, a code will appear the pupils will just join it and then you start the game so uh, as mentioned um, I've tried to make this as familiar as possible so um, I've kind of done it like Kahoot in the sense where you enter a room name and then you enter your character name and then you get faced with this window which will give you your learn intentions and the recall intentions as well as some instructions of how you play the game um, and once the game starts you'll basically be put into this world where you just briefly saw uh, with other players so uh, these two players are my friends who have joined in 
and you get given your first question. So just like Kahoot, uh, as you can see in the top right, it's computer systems. And in the top left, it tells you what question you're on. Uh, if you get it right, you should see that your character cheers and then starts moving based on how fast that they answered the question. So in this case, I moved three places. Um, and now, as you can see, we've got a gold card now. That is for a uh, retrieval round. Um, again, so you've got 10 seconds to answer this question. Uh, what is Microsoft Word used for? And as mentioned, um, that is picking one of the multiple definitions that is available. So um, the goal is that you keep going around, you answering as many questions as you can. Um, the faster you answer them, the more gold coins you get. That is in the top left hand corner. Uh, so we've got retrieval round again. Uh, if you're the first person to answer, you get a bonus, and if you get if you're second person to answer, you get a slightly smaller bonus. Um, but th the trick is to answer correctly and quick. Uh, if you answer wrong, you don't move at all. Uh, I'm just gonna move the video along a bit. There we go. So you can see that the game has progressed. Um, these two people have overtaken and so on and I'm now at 51 coins and we're kind of approaching the end of the game. So uh, in the long term, um, I'm looking at maybe, well, not maybe, but definitely adding uh, things like mini games so that uh, after two or three questions, a mini game will play. So the whole class has to play against each other. Um, and basically it could be like an IQ game or a typing game or a math game or a literacy game. You know, anything that is educational, but fun and kind of breaks up the, uh, the straightforward Kahoot style question, you know? And um, the other plan is to obviously make this accessible from home. So right now it could be played from home, but the quiz can't be started from home. And uh, the hope is that at some point, pupils will start using this as a, an actual study tool uh, to, you know, revise for tests and things like that. And um, yeah, I, I believe it could be a proper sort of uh, source of studying, if you like.